Hello everybody, beautiful day in Pittsburgh as the Saturday afternoon light blends into the long shadows as the sun begins its descent. Beautiful day. The heat of the summer is pretty much gone. It's been uh, warm, but not that summer heat that makes you uh, want to stick your head in an air conditioner and then jump into a pool filled with ice water. We're here in Pittsburgh again. I've uh, been coming back and forth between Pittsburgh, to Columbus, Atlanta, or taking in all kinds of sights this summer or fall, whatever, we, whatever we're in right now. And doing videos about communities around P-Town. Not, not enough, I don't think, on the north side, but we're going to rectify some of that now. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, we've been doing a series of videos about the different communities, what they're about, their history, their context. And one thing that's neat about doing this series of these different cities, different communities, is it gets you down into the nooks and crannies, right, of, of the town. Instead of just uh, flying over, over the top, you get down into the bergs, into the streets and avenues, and learn about what it's all about. So for this particular video, we're going to focus on a community on the north side of the Mongay, I mean the Allegheny, called Sharpsburg. Now, Sharpsburg has been a vital part of this portion of Pittsburgh since its founding in 1799, settled in 1760, incorporated in 1801. And the fact that the early industries in Pittsburgh really counted on the citizens of Sharpsburg, the men and women, predominantly men working at that time, because manufacturing took off in Pittsburgh in the late 1700s. It was like, kaboom. I think glass, glass manufacturing was the very first one, I believe, and then all kinds of industries. Well, what, do you, what happens when you start manufacturing and, and really maybe you've never done it before, okay? It might be something new to you as the owner of the factory, <laughs> right? I mean, think about it, like 1787. Okay. So you need somebody with an eye for detail, sort of an accountant's mind, but somebody that can check the quality of your product and make sure it's up to stuff. And they noticed that people from the Sharpsburg area were particularly adept at this, particularly sharp, you might say. And employ them to maintain the quality, guarantee the quality of what was going out the factory door. So Sharpsburg name, uh, the name Sharpsburg was particularly accurate in describing the very detail-oriented people of the community. Now, how that came about, no one is particularly sure. It's right here on the river, so some people maintain that uh, in the very early days of people coming down the river to settle in the area, that they put the lead canoe as somebody with a detailed eye that could pick out danger, perhaps around the bend, as they came around the bend on their canoes, on their watercraft. And those people tended to settle near the water, which was Sharpsburg. That's one theory. Uh, no one would, no one really knows. It's 200 some years later, but there it is, right there, Sharpsburg. You can see it on the sign. That's where we're just going right over the bridge here into uh, the, into, into the Sharp. We're going to go over the bridge into Sharpsburg, and I tend to think that that theory is relatively correct that the people that settled the area were were around to settle it because they had the sharp eye they had the attention to detail and that, that not only helped them uh, settle the area but 
they kept them alive, right? It's a question of it's a question of um, of survival, right? Being able to de detect danger that that uh, will keep you alive. Because there wasn't any hospital system, there wasn't any school system, there wasn't any systems. <laughs> it was just, you know, the campfire, uh, the, 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 the new factories that people were putting up in a, as an attempt to create industry. And they needed somebody that had the sharp eye and attention to detail to keep the things up to snuff so that when they exported goods to England or to New England or to Atlanta or wherever it was going, that people that bought those products bought them again. And here we are down in the streets and avenues, down in the nooks and crannies of, the, of these communities, in this particular case, Sharpsburg, and I'm reminded of so many different videos we've done and how old Pittsburgh really is. When you really get down here, you know, I, I've been to the uh, early streets of Los Angeles, Overa Street, and that was the 17, 1750, right in there. Well, when that happened, Pittsburgh was building a city, like they were building factories. When, when, when uh, the early explorers in Los Angeles were checking out Old Vera Street, right? So it's a very old city, even though it's not on the coast. It's not your Boston. It's not your Philadelphia. But gosh, guys, this was one of the first that were setting up the industries that built America. I mean, what kind of industries are we talking about besides, I mentioned glass manufacturing. Well, they pencil erasers. The pencil eraser industry started here in Pittsburgh. Okay, the underwear label industry started right here in Pittsburgh. We've, we've talked about the bottle cap industry because that followed on the, on the, the heels of the bottle manufacturing. Uh, the famed Coca-Cola Mexican bottle was first started here in Pittsburgh on a, on a, on a street called Mexico Street. That's where it got that Mexican uh, Mexican connotation. And then later it was made in Mexico, and then that's how it kept going. All right, you've got the you've got the lug nut, the lug nut industry. You've got the barrel industry. All of these started right here in the burg, guys. Uh, the steeple. When you see a church and you see a steeple, those were made right here in Pittsburgh. License plate screws. Those were started here in Pittsburgh. The screws for license plates. You can never find the right one. I mean, mine is practically bolted onto the car with a, when welded because I couldn't find the right screw. 200 years later, I still can't find the right screw. Well, think about it back in those days. How do you put the license plate onto your buggy? All right? Um, the yarn industry, the uh, men's to pay industry started here. Okay, the uh, spoke. They started building spokes here for motorcycles. That started in Pittsburgh. All right, the horse whip industry. That's kind of a natural. Let's take a trip down the down the avenues and see how the people live here. See, look at these homes, man. These homes were built in 1780, 1790. There's a guy, uh, I think he's using one of those antique mowers, probably from 1781. Okay, we're driving into the sun, but think about riding your horse into the sun as you headed west, right? You're, you're heading west. And you're coming down this horse trail. It's not paved. It's not. There's no uh, gravel. It's just a dirt trail. You're on your horse, and you see the smoke rising from campfires. And you're trying to decide: Is this the home for me? Is this the home for my family? Should we keep going to points west, perhaps uh, Marietta, Ohio, perhaps Cincinnati? Okay, 
you know, maybe uh, Portsmouth. What about Detroit? You're, you know, all these things are going through your mind, and you decide to stay here in Pittsburgh and build the town of Sharpsburg. Help build the town of Sharpsburg with your very sharp skills. You, you notice that nobody in your family has eyeglasses because they don't need them. Their eye, eyes are 20-20 vision. You notice that everybody in your family, their hair is all combed very carefully because they pick out on, on their fellow family members any hair that is out of place. And they, they take their, they lick their finger and then they straighten out the hair. They, they mat it down with a wet finger, right? You notice these things. And it occurs to you that you and your family have extraordinary skills that can be used in the town of Sharpsburg. And so you settle here and you get a job in a factory as a quality control engineer and so does your offspring. And so does your offspring's offspring. And now you have a family legacy of of quality control on products that are helping to build the backbone of American industry. Because remember, Pittsburgh guys has that that American can-do spirit, and perhaps perhaps Sharpsburg is the town that was able to make it happen. Because everybody in this community. Every, every house you look at here housed somebody that made sure that the products that went out from America, see when people in England would get a, a license plate screw or a church steeple or a, a shoelace from America, they didn't necessarily say, oh, this came from Pittsburgh. They said it came from America. So Sharpsburg were the people making sure that things that came from quote unquote America in the world's eyes were up to snuff. So from Butler Street to Catherine Street to Grant Avenue, okay, this is the community that made sure that the reputation of America was square and fair and accurate and held in high regard. And even when you look at an American product, like, like for example, these Harley Davidson motorcycles right here. Okay, these Harley Davidson are, are such an emblem of American uh, manufacturing, know-how, fun, adventure, excitement. And yet, today, 80% of that product, that motorcycle, is, the products are made in all different parts of the world. Italy, France. And the image, the quality of the motorcycle is dependent on the quality coming out of those countries. So picture that in 1777, when somebody in England calls across their their mansion in London to the butler and says, please order more of those license plate screws from America. Uh, Jeeves, uh, might, might you order more of them license plate screws from America for me? And if the butler put out the call, for the license plate screws and they weren't up to snuff, guess who suffered? America. So the reputation of Pittsburgh and America are intertwined in 1770, 1780, 1801, 1825, 1840, 1850, because in many people's eyes, Pittsburgh was America and vice versa. And guys, Sharpsburg is the town that made sure 
that everything was okay. I don't know. I, I find it inspiring. And this has been another Joe Ditzel Community Spotlight parody. Guys, come on back. We've got a lot more. We're going to explore some of these streets and avenues up here. Until next time.